Hi everyone, this is just a general update video. I'm still on holiday, but holiday for me doesn't really mean not doing any work. It just means doing the slightly easier bits of work to like catch up on tasks and stuff. So this will just be a quick update video, mostly for my patrons, but I'll make it public so other people can watch it as well. Kind of just explaining my thought process for what's going to happen in the coming months. So when I get back from this trip away, I'm going to begin a new development phase or development phases for most of the add-on projects. This is going to require getting some help from the community. But when I say require, it's like I, I will be doing what I've always been doing, which is basically just making the tools for myself, for like a hypothetical future version of myself that might need them in the future. That's how I've always thought about it. Like if I'm building for myself, what will I make? But these projects are getting quite big now. And especially for Biogen, which I'm intending to talk about in like a new main channel video, but don't hold me to that because things always change. I'm going to need to get lots of like voluntary demonstrations from people about all the different kinds of logic we can express with geometry nodes because I want Biogen to be not really just like a nice collection of like template starting points for different geometry nodes trees logic but because Biogen has been built around having all these complex like application operators in the way that you can apply different types of geometry nodes trees and modify stacks to different types of objects it technically supports like any kind of geometry nodes effects. But I know that when I come around to doing Biogen version 10, which again, I'll talk about a bit more in the uh, main channel video, if I do it, I'm so non-committal. I'm gonna be focusing so hard on the actual kind of underlying technology, if you wanna think about it that way, for kind of smart applying effects to objects that I might not have the time or even necessarily like the intellect or experience to organize what will be the most important types of geometry nodes templates to be able to make available to people. So if they wanted to do all different types of like generative model effects they would have like the most useful starting points available to them so in kind of preparation for that i've um, made some changes to our discord server because on discord there are these new types of forum channels which are like regular text channels except you can separate them down into multiple different threads so obviously that's useful for doing things like you know having uh, submissions or like different help requests or bug reports etc they can be tagged in different ways as well which makes it handy i will probably also add a new page on my website for like um, feature request specific contact emails like basically a form where people can submit feature requests and stuff except they won't be able to send files through that where you can send files on discord but anyway yeah it won't just be by gen like i feel like i want to kind of crack down on this development aspect of like all the things i do where am i going with this basically i do so many different things but development and making products and tools is the thing which I seem to have clicked with more than anything else. And I think people know me for more than anything else. So I feel like I just want to explore that potential and kind of punch through that more. I've got a list of all different kind of features which have been requested for the other projects as well, like Holt Tools, the free add-on. And there have been some notes for Modular Workspaces, which is the newest add-on, which a lot of people seem to really like. So I definitely want to continue with that. In relation to that add-on, actually, it's going to be more a case of making more useful collection assets because I've had some like, you know, templates placed in there by default that I wanted to make them higher quality and add a wider variety of them as well. So it'd be nice to try and get some people's opinions about that. As a part of this interest in going back and doing these new kind of development cycles, I have also invested, as I said in a recent vlog, in a new kind of beefy laptop. I think this will be interesting for being able to like test tools on different devices. Even though there will still be Windows and I don't have access to a Mac computer, I don't necessarily want to buy a Mac computer because I don't want to shell out on something I'm not going to actually use even though I know it'll be useful for development purposes, but I do know a few people that have Macs, so I can just throw some tools or some scripts at them and just see if it works properly. Like, to be honest, most of the issues I've had with these add-on tools have come from Mac devices. And just to put it on record, because I have actually explained this somewhere in the documentation or on like the store page for the generators lab content pack for Biogen. There's a little notice near the top. A lot of the issues from Mac actually stem from hidden files in folders. I think they're called .ds underscore store files or something like that. And Python was getting really confused because um, I remember having a script that was like, you know, get me a list of all folder directories. And even though it's not a folder directory, it was returning that file inside of it. So then when you kind of iterated through and then try to like open it, it wouldn't work it for an error because it's not actually a folder. So at least I think it was that way around. It might have been looking for all the files and trying to open that. Not, I think it was the folder version. But yeah, that was like a really difficult one to interpret because I had to get an error log from a user that was having trouble with that content pack and then read through that. I was going, wait, what are these 
.ds store things. There's also the issue that people sometimes find it hard to find where the add-ons are installed on Mac computers because I think the library area is hidden by default or something like that. So yeah, it's a little bit tricky trying to you know get people to install things properly on Mac. There may also be an issue with how zip files are represented, but I'm not too sure about that one. I've had a complaint about someone that says, I downloaded the zip file, but it wasn't a zip file. It was just a regular folder. And I'm thinking, okay, well, that might just be how it looks like on Mac. So yeah, I'm a bit confused about all of that side of things. I'm not a Mac expert at all. I'm not even a Mac rookie. Well, maybe I am. I had like a MacBook Air a while back. And yeah, I mean, I, that's, I'll stick with Windows because I'm just, I'm a Windows fan, but okay, maybe not a fanboy, but I use it for everything, you know, for gaming, for work. So why would I use anything else? I don't really want to use Linux because again, I'm just going to bump into all sorts of issues that I just don't have on Windows. So, but yeah, I know it's responsible to like try and test things on the different operating systems. And ideally, there would be like a few different things available and I would just be able to go, yes, 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 it works. Okay, move on. Anyway, yeah, so that's the plan. I think it'll be fun, actually, because it'll also give me some more things to show off on, you know, social media platforms, etc. Like when it comes to like growing a social presence, for me, I found that it tends to speed up the most when I'm in a development phase of a project. And I'm showing people what new things can be done. And they go, oh, you know, shiny new tool. <laughs> fun. But yeah, for each of these projects, I think it will be really handy and useful getting some extra feedback from the community. Some submissions, hopefully, as well. Give people like a nice community vibe, community feel, like they're actually contributing to something. But one thing I am kind of worried about a little bit is that, well, I'll probably explain this in the video as well, but I've been waiting a bit to develop Biogen further, waiting to see what people do with geometry nodes. So even with myself, to give you an example, the ambient grunge node that I made, I was working on an update to that called the physicality update, which basically just, you know, it generates physical dirt, like actual clumps of dirt around the body in the general like ambient occlusion-ish areas where the shader would usually be placed. I actually did a tutorial relevant to that about getting ambient occlusion in geometry nodes and I actually built this as a tool. Like it works with Biogen. It's an ambient grunge content pack. I think I called it ambient dirt and grunge. And you know, you choose an object, you click a button, it auto generates like an AO map around the object and it places physical dirt there and it works and I have it and I haven't shared it. Why? Well, because they required an extra feature in Biogen, which I call the pre-calculation. Well, there could be all different kinds of pre-calculations, but this one was about ambient occlusion into vertex weights with such vertex colors, but you can kind of convert it between vertex weight groups as well. Now, I considered that mentally as like a version 10 feature, this pre-calculation thing where we can generate data which gets fed into a geometry nodes tree prior to the actual tree being calculated in real time. But because I haven't finished developing version 10 and I haven't gone back to it, then because that version is not released, I can't give that physical update to people because that's not available. Does that make sense? And that's entirely my fault because I could just say, oh, let's just add this as like version 9.1.2, but I don't really want to do that. I don't know why. I've just decided mentally that that's going to be like a version 10 update. So yeah, anyway, aside from that, I was kind of holding back a bit slowly just to see what other people would do because I know that clearly I wouldn't be able to come up with all of the logic that what you know, all, all the different things that people would be able to make with geometry nodes. The community would be much better at exploring that potential than me. So let's take a step back and just see what they do. What can be done? I have a lot of ideas for like generative modeling type stuff and kind of constructing odd shapes from like splines and curves and things like that, which there's a lot of potential behind that. But let's just take a little step back and see what everyone else is doing. That's opened up like a lot of interesting ideas. I've been grabbing links for like the most interesting things and keeping them stored in my Notion page for Biogen. Now, the intent is not to copy them, it's to study the logic. So this is why I think it'll be interesting getting community interaction or community involvement for the Biogen project in the future when deciding what are going to be the most useful logic templates for geometry nodes for surface effect, mesh parametric and structural effects and volume effects to place into the add-on because they're going to know a lot more than me. The only thing to keep in mind is that when people submit that stuff, it can't be copying. Like I don't want them to just copy from someone that's making like a product for geometry nodes because that's not fair. So it has to be like condensed good logic demonstrations. So yeah, I just need to think about how to word that. I might even record it soon. This is a pretty nice kind of like setup. I like this wall. So maybe I should do it here. So other than that, there are some other things like the Easy BPY Cookbook. I've been having a little think about what kinds of things should be included in that. I've been making notes for my video kind of explaining how people can help contribute to these projects as well. So 
I have my notes to do a video about that. Aside from all of this, um, the holiday's been going quite nicely. It's just like a nice general chill holiday with family. And I managed to meet up with Charon yesterday. He came over. He's come over to the UK for university. So uh, yeah, we had a nice meetup finally after all these years. My brother from an Indian mother. So we got some nice pictures of that as well. He was very happy to meet my dog, Penny. And uh, thankfully she welcomed him with uh, open paws. So yeah, it was nice. Anyway, I hope you've been doing well, all of you. I'm quite looking forward to getting back home, getting that, you know, new laptop and just sitting down and cracking on with projects because I think it's going to be fun. And it's also going to be like a really packed end of year because obviously the uh, Blender conference is coming up at the end of October and there are going to be so many people going to that, so many people I know. And for a lot of them, it's going to be their first time kind of meeting all these friends and kind of saying hi again. All right, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, since we've got like film posters behind, if you want to put like a film emoji, I think they do like cameras or like, what are those? You'll figure it out. Like something related to film, put an emoji like that in the comments so I can see if you made it this far. So um, have a great day, stay safe, and I will see you next time.